In this lesson, I'm going to be talking about how to make open voiced chords. We're going to take four note seventh chords, spelled one, three, five, seven, and instead of playing them in one hand, we're going to split them into two hands, playing two notes in the left, two notes in the right, and a melody on top of the two notes in the right. And this is our basic start for how to play open voiced chords. Let's take a look at the type of open voiced chords we're going to be studying in this lesson. To begin with, let's look at a normal four note seventh chord in root position spelled one, three, five, seven. We would call a chord spelled like this a closely voiced chord. And when we say voice, we're referring to the various tones in the chord as if they were singers, the lowest voice to the highest voice, like you might find in a choral group. What we're going to be doing in this lesson is finding out how to spread these voices out, put some of the notes up in the right hand and some of the notes down in the left hand. So to do that, what we do is rearrange the notes in the chord. So we have one and five in the left hand and three and seven in the right hand. Now we can also reverse the order of the tones in the right hand. We can switch them so they're like this, seven and three. Let's hear what our open voice chords sound like. Let's take an F major 7 chord. And now let's take that 1 and 5 from the chord and put it down here. So now we have our 1 and 5, 3 and 7. An open voiced F major 7 chord. Let's do the same with a G minor 7 chord. Take the 1 and 5 from the chord and put it down here. Leave the 3 and 7 where it is. Let's do it again on the A minor 7. Take the one and five, bring it down here. And one more time on the B flat major seven. Take the one and five down here. Okay, so we've got four chords walking right up the scale. One, two, three, four, F major scale. And let's just play them like that. One and five in the left, three and seven in the right. Once more. Very beautiful sound. Open voice chords. When we play our open voice chords and have our melody note riding on top of the open voice chords, we have three notes played in our right hand and our left hand's always playing two notes. Often we'll find out that the melody note fits right here on the top of the chord, whether it's seven or three. It's often right there and it rotates. Sometimes it's on top and we play three notes or sometimes it's here and we're playing two notes. Sometimes it's here and we play three notes and sometimes two notes. And so Most of what we have to get used to is what we're going to do with our right hand because our left hand is always playing one and five. What we're going to study here in this concept, we are going to leave the one and five stable on every chord we go to. So this will be a given. The part that we have to pay attention to is whether we play seven and three or three and seven. And we become better at spotting these two tones, three and seven on all of our chords and work toward getting it to be an automatic part of our playing. When we learn how to make our open voice chords to support our melody, we can use them frequently to come up with a very smooth sound. You almost can't go wrong when you use open voice chords. And we're gonna be learning how to harmonize entire songs using them in this lesson. Eventually, you find many ways to make the chords and this will be just one of your choices to mix in with the other methods that you have. Now, in order to work with this lesson, you want to be able to make your five basic jazz chords. These are four note seven chords, and there's five types. There's the major seven, the dominant seven, the minor seven, minor seven flat five, and diminished seven. So you want to be able to make those pretty fluidly or know how to make one from any of the 12 notes on the piano. Now, if you don't know how to do those, please take a look at a lesson I have called the five basic jazz chord types. 
Let's take a look at the first four bars of Danny Boy and see how we're going to apply our open voicings. In these first four bars, I wrote down all the chords that we use, and I think it's a good idea to do this and just make sure you can play those chords in closed position and open position before you start to harmonize the melody. Whenever you work on a new song, do that, and that way you're sure what you're doing with the chords before you get to them in that spot in the song. And if you find yourself trying to learn the chord and the melody at the same time, it, it makes your work a lot harder. And this way also you can kind of maybe start a collection of chords uh, that you're learning and working on. So here's what I mean. Take these six chords and first play them in closed position and walk through all of them. C major seven, C dominant seven, F6, A minor 7, D7, G7. Play them in any range, just make sure that you can play them. And then open them up. So we have our C major 7, just make sure you can open it up, 3, 7, 1, 5 on the left, 3, 7 in the right. Then make sure you can also play it as a 7, 3. Not just 3, 7, but 7, 3. Because we don't know which position our right hand will be in to support our melody, so we want to make it in both positions. Same thing with C7. So we've got our 1-5 down here, lift the 3-7 up, and make sure you can play it as a 7-3 also. F6. Let's put our 1-5 down low and hold on to our 3-6. A minor 7. It's kind of low, but it doesn't matter what register you put it in. Keep the 1 5, put the 3 7 up here, and make sure you can play it as a 7 3 also. Then D7. Okay, pull that 3 and 7 out up here, and make sure you can play it as 7 3. G7. Pull the 3 7 out, and also 7 3. Okay, so that's what I recommend. It's a real simple step, but it programs your brain and your hands to what chords you're using. So when you start to work on a song, you've kind of got a head start. Okay, let's harmonize our first four bars of Danny Boy here. And everywhere we see a chord written above the melody, that's where we're going to find out which open voice chord we're going to use to support the melody. We have some pickup notes into our first spot. So we've got this E note here, and let me put this little marker right on that E note and see how we're gonna harmonize that with a C major seven chord. Here's C major seven. I'm gonna pull the three and the seven out and move it up here. Well, that's too high, isn't it? That's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to invert it and go seven three. And now it's perfect. Three is the melody note. Okay, that's how we start, and then we got a little pickup note into our next spot. We come right back to an E again, and this time it's a C dominant chord. It's going to be the same thing. We keep the 1-5 and move the 3-7 up, but we discover that it won't work like that, so we've got to invert it down to 7-3. And that's how we're going to do it. I wouldn't use these fingerings, but that's just how I have to make them so I can show you that, that melody note. Okay, and then we have some more pickup notes. So it's the D note, and we've got an F6 chord going on that D note. Let's make F6 here. Well, I can see that I've got a finger on the melody note. What I'm going to do is take the 1 and 5 and put it down here, hang on to the 3 and 6. And that works out pretty nicely for us. So we've got 3 and 6, and the melody note just happens to be the 6. Okay, we've got some melody notes to fill in before we get to our next chord spot. And it's here on bar three, we've got a G note, and we've got to put a C major seven under that G. There's C major seven. I'm gonna keep the one and five, move the three and seven up. Well, it doesn't work. I passed up the melody, so I'm gonna invert it down to seven three. So I've got seven three plus the melody note a three note chord in my right hand. And then another note alone. So on this, this run here, I've got two chords to put in. The first one's on the G, 
and I've got an A minor 7 to put under that G. So I'm going to keep the 1 and 5, take the 3 and 7, and that fits perfectly. So I got a 3 and a 7, which is the melody note. Then one note on my way to the next chord. Here I've got a C note that needs a D7 under it. Okay, I'm going to grab the D like that, and I see my little fingers on the melody note. So I'm just going to take the 1 and 5 down here, and I've got the 3 and 7 in my right hand, and the 7 is the melody. Now I've just got one more note before I get to the last chord, and that's a D note that has to be harmonized with a G7 chord. Okay, I'll play the G7 down here, hang on to the 1 and 5, bring the 3 and 7 up. Nope, passed up the melody, so I'll invert my right hand down to 7 and 3. So I'm going to have a three note chord, 7 3, plus the melody. Okay, so that's how we harmonize the first four bars, and we used our three most common chord types. I'll play it for you here. Nice and neatly arranged with open voice chords. I put together a three lesson series on open voicings to show you how they work and how you can incorporate them into your own playing. Now in each of our lessons we'll be working with at least one complete standard and so we can kind of build arrangements with the open voicings. And I'll be showing you some left hand techniques and also some basic rhythm techniques so you kind of get a, a simple arrangement to walk away with while you're working with the open voicings. The lessons get kind of progressive. You know, as I say, we're going to start here by just explaining the process. In lesson two, we'll work on a, a whole song, It Had to Be You, and look at some various things in it. And we'll show you how to make some fills in there with some basic rhythm technique. In lesson three, then I start showing you how to put uh, extended jazz tones into the chords and some alterations so things get progressively a little more sophisticated as we go along. And the example song there is The Man I Love, which is a terrific example song and has a lot of these altered tones in it that are really neat to work with. So you get the idea and you'll be able to hopefully incorporate them into any songs that you like to work with.